I'm Anne Emery. You're watching DataViz on the Go, the series where you learn DataViz time savers inside everyday software like Excel. And in this tutorial, you're going to learn about tables with check marks. It sounds niche, but it's not. I kid you not. I have seen two of these this week alone. This is nobody's real content, but this is the real formatting that both of those groups had. So for our tutorial today, I'm pretending that we're looking at different locations or sites and that we're looking at whether or not they used different evidence-based strategies. So both of the tables I saw did have this solid color fill in the headers and they did have the banded rows, meaning the gray, white, gray, white, stripey banded thing. And then they did just have X's on the inside. It's funny because these groups were like totally different. They did totally different topics, totally different parts of the world, but they both had the same table formatting, just the usual like Excel defaults, Microsoft defaults. Okay, so let's go through and edit this with some really quick hits. So first up, please, please, please declutter the table, get rid of all the background fills, and just keep the light gray horizontal lines between the rows. What we're trying to do is put more emphasis on the contents of the table on the actual X's, or as you'll see in a moment, they're gonna turn into really pretty checks. All right, decluttering should take you like 10 seconds. You would just click on your table and you're just removing the fill and you're adjusting the borders so that they're light gray inside the rows. Then another thing that should take you like two seconds, you're gonna use left aligned text, not centered. Left aligned text is faster to read than centered. You know how to do this, right? It's just like from centered to left aligned. Click, click, click. All right, with those bare minimum edits out of the way, let's get into the main event, the actual visuals. You could use actual check marks. I was worried with both of these groups that the symbol was the opposite of what they wanted. X means no, check means yes. That seems to be universal. With every country I've ever taught in, in person or virtually, that is totally intuitive. Check, yes. X, no. So I felt like they were using almost the opposite symbol here, okay? Nice and intuitive. You could have gray for no, and then a filled in color for yes. You could have this empty, you, you can try both ways, okay? I've got another tutorial on my YouTube channel. I'll link down below to that if you'd like to watch it on how you add these checks. It's probably like, I don't know, maybe like a 10 minute tutorial on all the ins and outs of what to do. It's only 10 minutes because I did it with my six-year-old and I was like explaining it to her. So I was talking in like kindergarten speed, not regular and speed, but you can go watch that about how to do the checks. In short, it's insert checkbox, but it's only in newer versions of Excel, okay? So if you're not on a newer version of Excel, you can try filled in squares versus outlined squares, also very intuitive. Everybody around the world understands that filled means yes, Empty means no. Now these behind the scenes, oh my gosh, don't overthink this. People think that I just sit around and I go to like insert shape and that I draw little squares 50 bajillion times and I arrange them on the screen. I have got better things to do as do you. So it is not insert shape. Instead it is, now you know all my secrets. It's good old webdings. It's webdings G and C, G for good, filled in, C for crappy, not filled in. So you type in your Gs and Cs, and then you just change it to a symbol font, good old Webdings, which is a native font, a system font. Webdings has been in Microsoft products for decades. I, I remember using it in the 90s. You probably saw it way back then too. So you can easily copy paste this into Word or PowerPoint. You can send it to your coworker. It's still gonna show up as the filled squares versus the outlined squares. I also didn't manually change the color here. I went up to conditional formatting. I set everything to be gray, gray G's and C's, and then I used this one so that anything equal to a G, it looks like, uh, it looks like this. Anything that it has a G turns purple automatically. So I wouldn't have to do it myself. So if I'm like, oh, actually they did use that strategy and I type in a G, it automatically changes colors too. You could also try circles. If you just, you know, if personally you don't like squares, go with circles. 
I like the way these look. I think they're really beautiful and really intuitive with that dark light contrast. And these behind the scenes, they are still good old webdings. They're webdings N. Now there is no, um, there's no webdings that has like an empty circle, you know, like this one. G versus C. There's no webdings filled circle versus empty outline circle. So with this one, you would have to either just do a dark brand color versus a light gray, as I've done here, or you could do the presence of a dot. Let me delete these. Okay. The presence of a dot versus the absence of a dot would be very, very easy for your audience. Again, Webdings is a native font. You could email this to somebody else. It's going to show up exactly the same on their computer. This group, uh, one of the groups with the table also wanted to show the totals. So they had added up already the totals at the bottom and to elevate it even further. I tried visualizing those totals, maybe with little tallies. These were small numbers. So I thought a little tally could work, but I don't know. It didn't make sense to me to have them at the bottom. So this is where you might try transposing the table. You know, think about, are you adding up down the column or across the row? behind the scenes. This is just a count if I'm just counting the checks and then I'm adding a little space, a little gap, and I'm repeating the pipe that many times. So if you can do count if or not, <laughs> comment below if you want a tutorial on that and repeat and what else is in here? Concatenate. That's it. It's just a couple formulas nested together. Again, if you want to know how to do that, comment. I will absolutely make some tutorials for you. You could keep going. You could try bars. Maybe it's bars. Maybe it's stacked bars and on and on and on with future iterations. Let's go back to where we started that one into, you know, any, any one of like these, I think that's beautiful. I think it's so intuitive and it's so fast. It might just be insert checkbox or webdings G's and C's or webdings N's, or maybe repeating the little pipe symbol a couple times to add some totals. I'm all about the time savers. I hope you love these because they're so easy for us to do behind the scenes. And don't they make a nice visual impact for your audience? Makes the table a little bit more engaging. I love the quick hits like that.